Ooh, let's dive deep into technology. All right, so, so not really a very interesting way to start a video when you say let's dive into technology because technology makes my head hurt. Um, maybe this won't be too bad you know we have to adapt to technology building these cars we do all these ls swaps late model drivetrains we've been doing that for a long time now so that's kind of become second nature we usually know that's what's going to go in one of these hot rods and we've been able to find ways to to make that fairly easy but when it comes to like actually manufacturing parts and stuff like that um, just brackets um, we do a lot of 2d stuff in qcad on our cnc table out there which i'll show you we can cut parts but we've been diving a little more into that technology so we've got a program on the computer here and we've had these brackets and what's neat about our table out there is we can draw something like this and my table will actually trace this if we've got a good line to go off of and then it'll hop over and it'll cut it out and that's a really good way to do it if you've got a cardboard template or something like that. The only issue that I have found with doing that is you don't really get the cleanest cut when you go to actually cut it after you've traced it because um, I, I think it's just kind of following that little bit of waviness that the camera's picking up of these lines and you can't get them just perfectly precise because it likes a Sharpie and it zooms in so much it's like it's it's like that a lot when you go down through there so you get you get a rough edge which is not a big deal click quick clean up and all that but it's a lot cleaner when you can actually draw the part so we're going to do probably a couple of different things today i've got a couple of parts for the hudson that the truck that i can't show you remember we've talked about that one unfortunately we can do this stuff but i still can't show you the truck um, this was actually drawn to be traced on the table so we're gonna try to mic all this stuff out and get our angles. We're gonna hop into this system. I'll show you a little bit of what we use and then we'll take it over to the table and cut it out. All right, so what we're using right here is the uh, Fusion 360. Now I'm fairly new to the Fusion, uh, but it's very, it's very interesting. I've liked it a lot so far, um, you know, cause we can go in like a battery tray that we we designed up here we've got kind of like this conduit box that we've done that just just basically for shits and giggles just trying to go through and learn that 3d cad there was a couple of really good videos online for uh, actually modeling something like this to print so i just kind of followed that along when i was learning this system and i've, I've kept this here just to kind of reference back to and uh, of course i make myself a lot of notes so I've went through and kind of, you know, over time, giving myself a step-by-step -step to, if I run into anything weird, because, you know, we're, we're doing so much stuff out here, sometimes it's, it's hard to keep up with everything. All right, so one thing that's important that we want to try to make sure we get, because the system is going to need it and it makes it easier for us, is we need to measure at least off of two points from where these holes are. So we can measure off of this far wall right here and then off the bottom off of each one of them that's going to help us go in in the dimensions part of this and set these exactly where we want them as opposed to just trying to move the hole around and and get it where we need it All right, so this is the most simple one I could show you because it's just a square bracket with two holes in it. But let's hop in here and I'll show you how we can create this real quick and go cut it out. All right, so now we're in Fusion 360. Um, such an awesome program, unbelievable. So just real quick to hop right into it. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start, we're already on the front, we're looking at the front of the plane here, so we're gonna click front, make sure we're on that. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go up to our toolbar here and we're gonna create a sketch. That's gonna bring this plane up. What I tend to always do is I start on the plane. So I've clicked it this way, I can reference to that plane later on if I've got a 3D part and I need to measure or I need to mirror something, I can hop off of that plane to do it. Okay, so now that we've done that, we know this is more of a rectangle piece that we've got going here. So we're gonna click uh, create, we can go down to rectangle and we can go center rectangle. We're always gonna start in the center point. You can see there and then 
we're gonna we're gonna move it out and it's actually gonna let us type in here so we know that 2.5 well our length is gonna be 4.4 so we've got that. We're going to hit tab and that's going to drop us over to our next one. And that is 2.55. Enter. We've got a rectangle. So now that we're here, we don't really have to do anything else. And, and this is kind of different because I'm normally going in here and, and doing all kinds of stuff. But hopefully I can get to this other bracket. It's a little more involved, but, but this, is, this is quick and easy. All right, so what we want to do, we're going to finish sketch now because that's all we need. Once we finish our sketch, we're going to hop up here to sheet metal. We're going to go to flange. We're going to select our part, click OK. Now we've got a sheet metal piece. So just like that, we've created a sheet metal piece that we're able to move around in 3D. All right, now we need our holes. Okay, so let's get back to the front here. So now we're looking at the front again. Um, we need two holes, pretty easy. Now that we've finished that sketch and we've made this metal, we need to go create a new sketch. It seems it's almost every time that, that you go into something new, I feel like I'm going in to create a new sketch. It, it makes life a little easier. We can click off that plane and then there we are again. Okay, so we know we need a hole. We can just go up to our circle. We've got a center line already there for us. And we want that hole to be 0.5 inches. All right, so we've got that. Now, once we get that, we can select D on the keyboard. And now this is where these measurements that we took off of the ends, the edges of our plates are gonna come into play. So once we click D, we can select that end plane we can select center. We can hop over to the side, just pull that over and it's gonna give us a box that we can type in again. So fairly simple. We know that that was 0.9 inches. So we've got that. Now what we're gonna do, we measured off of this top wall. We're gonna select that end. We're gonna select our center again, hop up. We've got another box. 1.28 was what we had for that. So check that out. Just like that, we've got that exactly where we wanted it. Now, we could go ahead and do the other hole. I, I just tend to like to do it this way. Go to finish sketch. Now we need to actually make that a hole. All right, what's cool in here, instead of going up and using the toolbar, um, you can select S, that's your toolbox. So we know we want to extrude this hole. Extrude, that's gonna help us get rid of it. All right, so now it's already circled and highlighted. We're gonna roll this around just a little bit and you'll see that arrow right there. So we can grab that arrow. We can move it that way to get rid of the hole. You can also move it this way if you're 3D printing something and you wanna pull it out and maybe open that hole up. Um, we're gonna go this way. That's just gonna get rid of it for us. And just like that, now we've got a hole in that plate. So you can see how this is going. In just a few minutes, we're able to uh, we're able to get a lot done. So now I'm going to go ahead and do my other hole here. Okay, so now we just need to export this to a DXF file, which is what we need out there on the table. Um, pretty simple too. Um, we create a new sketch once again. Uh, new sketch for everything. We can go up to create or you can go into the toolbox and we want to project this. Once we project it, we're going to select it. We're going to get everything. And when we press OK, everything is outlined in purple. That's when we know we've got it. So we can go to sketches. We can go to our very last sketch we created, which was what we just did when we projected it. So we're going to right click it. And right there, we've got save as DXF, so we're going to do that. This is, I don't even remember what bracket this is. Let's just say, um, that's in bracket. All right, so we saved that to the desktop. So all we're going to do now is um, put a flash drive in there, save it over to that. That's what that computer out there on the table takes. So we'll go do this one. We'll go ahead and cut it, and then we'll come back and try to start working on this other bracket, which is a little more involved, but there's not a lot to it either. Used to hate doing this kind of stuff. Absolutely hated it. Let's get this over on a drive, get it out there to the table. Uh, we'll cut a few parts and then see if we can't get back in here and keep going. All right, so we're out here at the table. Um, 
we've got everything loaded in the computer so all we've got to do is start taking the steps to get through there and i'll show you that i was going to show you a little bit on this table arc light arc pro 9600 4x8 table it's got the hypertherm uh torch on it this thing works really good i'm not sponsored by these guys or anything like that they've done absolutely nothing for me but i would say this table has been probably one of the best ones i've used or seen and i would say the customer support with the arc light tables has been phenomenal if i call those guys they will hop into my computer and we will go through and figure out any issue or problem i'm having i've actually not had a problem with this but um up here not figuring out what to do but this has been a great table highly recommend it nice cuts so we've got it loaded in on our flash drive card all right so all those measurements look really close to what we put in there all right so got it cut out nice clean cuts couple of minutes to get a bracket get it cut on the table easy easy all right let's move on to the one that's a little more complicated but it's not really complicated still working on a flat plane it's 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 really simple but I uh, cut this out we've got all our measurements for it um, pretty simple bracket the thing with this is we have to figure out what plane we want to work off of whether we want to start with it flat or like at the bottom where we can lay it down pull our measurements for the box we want to start with so we're gonna do that we're gonna work from the bottom so we're gonna start off with all the same goodies center rectangle again want four three quarters tall we're gonna do what was it five and a half wide All right, so now we've got the rectangle. We're gonna we're gonna work everything in this. So since we're looking at it like that, we're gonna create a circle in this top right corner. There's a few different ways you can do this, but this is uh, what we here have found to be the best way to do it. So I'm just gonna open up a circle anywhere within here. Circle needs to be two and three quarters. Looks good. I'm just going to move it where it is touching these corners. I said I was. All right. Where it's just touching that top and side corner. That's a good starting point. All right, I like that. Now we can work in lines. So that's with an L. And uh, we're going to start at this bottom corner line. We're going to pull a line up to the edge of our circle right there. Now, since we know the bottom of this is four and a half, go 4.5 line again now we're gonna take that line up to the side of this one up to the side of that circle right there all right that looks good now what's cool in here is if we click I we've got our measurements so I want to double check this. I'm going to measure from that bottom corner to that one. Yep, and it comes out four and a half. So you can see right there, four and a half. Down there, four and a half. So that looks good. We've got our two and three quarters in our circle. All that looks great. So now we're going to come up here to sheet metal. The flange tool. Flange tool is going to let us turn this into sheet metal here. So, okay, and boom, we've got our sheet metal. Let's go create a new sketch. Still working on that front plane. Going to go with another circle. We're just going to pull that anywhere. Our circle needs to be 1.26. We're going to have tubing welded in there. 
D for diameter. Um, we're going to measure off of this bottom part of it. We can come over here, two inches. Now that moved our circle two inches from the bottom. We're going to do the same thing. We have to go from two points with this. So two different edges of material to the center and that is 1.5. So all right, we got that. We're going to finish a sketch again. And we're going to create a new one. Same thing, working on that front plane. All right, S for toolbox. Extract, extrude, I mean. All right, we spin that around. We can have this little hand grab a hold of it. And now it's gone. So, pretty simple. Okay, so let's get in this into a DXF file. Make sure we do the front plane on this one. Create, same thing as before. We're going to project this. Select it all. OK. Sketches. Right click that. Save as DXF. Hudson Engine Mount. Save. All right, we've got that saved to the desktop. We can go cut it out. All right, so now we've got them all cut out. Like I said, engine mounts for the Hudson. So one thing we want to do before we get these in there and start trying to tack them together with the TIG, if we can get in there with the TIG, um, that's mill scale on this metal. And a TIG does not like that. So if we want to get a good clean weld, we need to get the, the mill scale off of this where we're going to weld it. So we're going to do that now. We've also got just a little bit of slag from the table. We'll knock that off real quick. And then we should be able to test fit them in there, get them tacked in to, for mock-up. Hopefully move on to something else. So we've got our brackets tacked together. We've got our tube in there. Everything went together as it should. Uh, we've got our Lincoln Aspect 230 TIG. That's what we're gonna use to weld together this 3 16 plate. Now, one thing we wanna talk about right here is when you're doing one of these welds is a corner weld, especially when you're doing something this thick. If you're not gonna bevel those where you get basically a V and you're filling that V up with a weld. That's where you get your good penetration and where it, it's really going to grab in there and you're going to get a good strong weld. So what I mean by that corner weld is when we design these plates or brackets for them to go together, we're not laying them right over the top of each other where they're butting directly together because then you really got to try to pound the heat to it. Uh, you get the big fat gnarly welds. So you see right there how we've got them offset. These are corner to corner. So we're leaving a V in here and that's what we're going to use to penetrate through both pieces. So when you're doing plate like this on these corner welds, that, that's the way you want to do that to get that good penetration you're looking for.
there you have it. A little bit of Fusion 360, designed a couple of brackets, super simple, went out to the table, cut them out, and then we moved over here and we TIG welded them together. So, man, just a few minutes of time, able to create an engine mount that will hold that big Viper torquey horsepower making, mm, man, that son of a gun is mean. And it's sitting right there. <laughs> I promise it's right there. But uh, anyway, it turned out good. We got our TIG welded side there. Uh, the reason we sleeved it with the tube, we want to make it super strong. That way we can metal finish out our weld. So that will be the end result in the tube and everywhere we're going to have it super slicked out. Be really nice. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, really appreciate the support. Appreciate you guys that watch, comment. All that good stuff, man. Uh, I think we've got some t-shirts left on the website. So if you get an opportunity, run over there, check them out, and see you next time.